Welcome back to Power Lunch, everybody. The market's getting a new read on China's economy today, and the numbers are presenting a bit of a mixed picture. Eunice Yoon is live in Beijing with the details. Hi, Eunice. Hey, Tyler. Well, the headline Q1 GDP figure, surprise to the upside, expanding 5.3 percent versus expectations for 4.6 percent from a year ago. This is thanks to Beijing's efforts to supercharge its manufacturing and expand sell those products overseas. The March data, though, raised questions about the momentum. Retail sales and industrial production both missed. Uh, new home prices fell at their fastest clip since 2015. And investment, as well as sales of property, which, of course, is a huge driver of this economy, both down in the double digits. A fixed asset investment, though, uh, for the quarter came in stronger than expected. A lot of that money going into the manufacturing sector, as well as the efforts to promote Chinese tech products, of course, much the dismay of China's trading partners, uh, such as the U.S., as well as Europe. In fact, Germany's chancellor is in China and was uh, quite critical about what he described as China's overproduction. Uh, China, as you know, has been accused time and again of uh, selling products overseas by using state subsidies to uh, then flood the markets with uh, Chinese products. What accounts for this rather sharp declines? Are, are these numbers what accounts for the, the rather sharp declines in Hong Kong shares and others today? Yeah, well, uh, part of it was because of what's happening um, overseas, well, in the Middle East. There are a lot of there's a lot of concern there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in addition, uh, people were looking at these numbers and uh, were concerned. They were hoping to see um, more strength and uh, more direction uh, from the Chinese uh, uh, policymakers. Now investors are looking to a big uh, leadership meeting uh, by the Politburo, which is called um, later this month, hoping for some signals. But so far, the signals from President Xi are that his efforts to really rely more heavily on manufacturing uh, might not be going anywhere. He was um, uh, defending uh, China's efforts to supercharge its manufacturing, uh, saying that China's um, ability to sell uh, EVs, lithium batteries, as well as solar panels is only good because it addresses uh, global inflation as well as climate change. Of course, not really mentioning um, a lot of the criticism that people have that um, China's state subsidies really harm uh, a lot of the, com the, uh, the other industries in the world by being anti-competitive. All right, Eunice, thank you very much, and thanks for getting or staying awake uh, all night to uh, join us this afternoon. Eunice Yoon, thanks. A group of U.S. lawmakers is asking the NASDAQ to delist blacklisted Chinese companies. Emily Wilkins joins us from Washington. Give me a sense of what's happening here. Why, why do they want the NASDAQ to take action? Hey, Contessa. Well, yeah, I mean, these are lawmakers. A lot of them are on the China Select Committee, and they have some concerns about some of these companies being listed. So they are encouraging the NASDAQ to deal with Chinese companies that are basically on this Pentagon blacklist. The Republicans on the Select Committee, uh, they're sounding the alarm that some Chinese companies like Hayside Group has raised over $190 million while being on this Defense, Defense Department list of Chinese military companies. And they're worried about those connections between the companies and, of course, uh, the Chinese Communist Party. Congresswoman Ashley Hinson, who led the letter, said that Haysai's connections to China pose a risk, both in terms of the U.S. military potentially using their technology and in the data that Haysai is collecting in the U.S. It's Chinese Communist Party protocol that they have to share. You know, it's the military civil fusions. There is huge risk here. It's why I want to work with the NASDAQ and other exchanges to make sure that they're not offering these listings and, and um, putting them out there. Again, it's a huge national security risk. We don't even know how much of this technology that Haysai could access within our own U.S. military going forward. The Select Committee previously raised concerns about LIDAR companies like Haysai that use lasers to measure speed and distance of physical objects. Now, Haysai has said the Defense Department's decision to place them on that list was, quote, unjust, capricious, and meritless, and they said they have no ties to militaries in any country. But lawmakers are now requesting NASDAQ to respond to questions about their policies around blacklisted companies within the next 30 days, and Congresswoman Hinson said there could be legislation coming depending on what kind of answers they get back. Guys? So now we wait and see how this back and forth goes and, and how the lobbying and, quote, education efforts work from NASDAQ toward Capitol Hill, right? 
I mean, yeah, Tyler, I think we're keeping a very close eye on that. I mean, another thing that you have to consider here is that Haysai has about 47% of the market share for these companies that use this laser technology. Uh, it's very common in EVs. It's common in current smart cities. And so that's another kind of aspect to keep an eye on as far as which companies are producing this kind of technology mm -hmm. and how they are responding to this potential uh, delisting. All right, Emily, thank you very much. Emily Wilkins reporting from the Capitol.